Hey, car enthusiasts. <clears throat> I'm here in my um, 1989 Carrera 3.2. Figure I'd take you on a drive. It's a nice day. So I'll give you a few little technical pointers here if uh, you're not familiar with these cars. But uh, this is an air-cooled Porsche. I'm going to start her up. And um, I would say probably the important thing on these older cars is uh, to make sure they warm up really good. So on this car, I don't know if you could see it, but there's a temperature gauge here. So you just want to take it easy. Even the gearbox, this has a vaunted G50 gearbox, which, you know, they may be a little bit more durable than the 915, but they're harder to rebuild. So you have a lighter gearbox that um, is easy to rebuild, but may need more rebuilds versus a stronger gearbox that it's very expensive to rebuild, but the moral of the story is you don't want to have to do it. So take it easy on your synchros, come to a complete stop, shift slowly in the gear on these transaxles, and let the gearbox warm up also. So these cars reward good ownership. So I usually don't let it go over 3,000 RPM until uh, I get it warmed up. This car has been rebuilt. I did it a year and a half ago. I do have better valve springs and uh, the ARP rod bolts, which my red light on this car is probably a safe 7,000 RPM. So yeah, slowly in the gear. I know some people double clutch, but I don't. Um, also, you really don't want to lug these engines. You know, American cars are designed to kind of run low RPM and just loaf along, but these cars need a little bit of RPMs to go. So yeah, I'm in third gear now, and um, I'll stay here just until it warms up is about maybe 60 degrees here today in South Florida. It's a cool day, good day for a drive. So knowing that, I'm getting a colder than amount, a colder than normal amount of air going into the engine, cooling it, so it'll take longer to warm up. And these cars do take a long time to warm up. There's no clutch on the fan. It's a direct drive, so I'm getting all the cooling on a cold engine right now. So what we're looking for is that the oil warms up. A little squeaky brakes there. I'd have to do a little bit spirited braking there to break them in today. Uh, things to look for while we're at this traffic light. So the oil pressure is here. It's like four bar goes up to about five as you give it RPMs. As the oil warms up, it gets thinner and the pressure drops a little bit. Temperature is creeping up a little bit. It's probably about 150 degrees now. On this side, I don't know if you can see it, but there's an oil gauge. It's the oil level and the dry sump oiling system and the tank over there and the rear passenger side of the engine compartment if you look at it it's in the red doesn't mean there's no oil in it it just means the 11 quarts of oil have not warmed up yet to expand enough to get a proper reading so most people get in these cars and they're freaked out hey we need oil we need oil well you overfill it then you suck oil into your throttle body so um let it warm up first and you'll be okay So any old car you're, you know, looking for smells, sounds, anything out of whack. Everything's good on this. Move forward. Shifting good. Transmission is starting to warm up a little bit. You're kind of greeted on this car with the, the whoosh of the fan. Steering is very tight. 
this car I kept, it's an aftermarket steering wheel, but it's a 380 millimeter. I wanted to keep the, kind of the same leverage as I would on the stock car, which is 380. The stock size steering wheel, just for slow speed uh, maneuvering. I get more leverage with the bigger steering wheel, and I'm, I'm fine with it. I like it. This one's from Italy. It's Louisi. I fitted it to the car. So my tactile pieces, nice steering wheel, brakes are good, clutch is good. I got the wooden shift knob here. I don't think you can see that, but when I refurbish the car, I kind of try to make it my own. Brakes on these cars are very good. You notice the uh, the uh, effort is somewhat high, but the feel is excellent. So that would characterize most of the things on this car. It's excellent steer gets very tight, non-powered assist. Suspension is, the stock suspension is pretty compliant. You, you can go over railroad tracks with it, no problem. It's not gonna jar you to death. This one has the base shocks, non boosting but I did add some spherical bushings to the suspension when I redid the suspension. So I kind of like having the base suspension. It's not too harsh with taking a lot of the rubber bushings out of the system. So, so yeah, good suspension, easy to work on. Yeah, you can just give it gas when it turns. Exaggerations of, you know, having the rear end come out you have good tires, it's not 1975. Modern compounds make it much more difficult to have issues with these cars. So you still do, you still have the laws of physics. You want to give it gas around the turn, brake before the turn, gas out of the, out of the, in the turn and out. And you won't have any issues with that. All right, so maybe we'll go on the highway here. Maybe I'll edit this out to get through the rest of the warm-up. Not completely warmed up yet, but I want to give you guys some red line runs. A lot of these people who drive the cars in their uh, review videos don't own the car. So maybe they're afraid of breaking something, but as they say, they're not giving it the beans. That's the whole point of having these cars. Which I can't give it the beans here now because I guess I'm in a construction zone. Okay, so coming up the temperature a little bit, about halfway there maybe. Probably just fuddy duddy it a little bit in the right hand lane until I come up for temperature and then give you a video of just hitting it on a on ramp here. But while I'm doing that, so just at normal highway speeds, um, I think I'm doing around a little under 70, it's 2800, 2850 RPM. a lot like a motorcycle it's kind of in a power band now it's not a deep overdrive in fifth gear so if I give it gas you know the speedometer starts to go up immediately like a motorcycle I don't have to downshift so pulling just over 3,000 rpms about 80 relatively com composed um, it's stable even though it has a short wheelbase this is a non-sport it does not have a front spoiler or re rear spoiler from the factory and you know when you get in the triple digits if you get there high enough you feel it a little bit it's not entirely stable but here in the states we're not on the autobahn you're not going to be banging out you know, an hour at over 100 miles an hour in a remote area of Germany. So I don't think it's critical, critical. 
maybe a front spoiler would be good. I can feel lift. But at this speed, no, it's very planted, it's very responsive. Kind of wants you to kind of wants to be above that 3000 RPM limit here on the uh, on the highway. But for a lot of people not familiar with these engines, they were developed really for racing. So it's a dry sump engine. There's eight main bearings on a six cylinder engine. Every rod has its own journal. So it's got its individual oiling. And it's an 11 quart dry sump system with a very robust oil pump. There's two separate oil coolers on it, plus the fan. And it's really designed to pull high RPMs pretty much indefinitely. You're not going to get oil starvation. You're not going to get issues with, you know, pulling G's. The dry sump will keep the engine properly lubricated. Another light. So, as we set out the light, checking everything out, my oil level has come up a little bit, meaning that we've uh, we've warmed up here a little bit. Oh, about a half a half a tank of fuel. Oil temperature is probably in the 160 degree range. Idle is steady. We are stopped. do not have the heater on if you, my oil pressure went from the four bar I'm down to about a little less than two so a couple things while we're waiting for the light yeah I rebuilt this last year it's the three three point four liter I use the uh, ten to one mala piston and cylinders it, it has nine six four cams Stock exhaust in a stock configuration, but I did put on Dankst uh, stainless. It has a Monty M41 muffler. Uh, I rebuilt kind of the throttle. I bored the throttle body, and uh, it has a uh, MSDS air filter on it, k &N style. I don't like the stock air cleaner on these. It's hard to open them up. you got to have uh, small hands, which I don't. I rebuilt the air box, the little flap door. All right. stable cars like I said even with the short wheelbase you get a, you don't get squeaks and rattles in these you know I've had other other cars um, domestic sports cars like America sports car which I love those but you don't have the build quality of these the doors shut with these on these cars with authority um, people say they're bulletproof these air cooled Porsches I do not think they are they all have their weaknesses. These are lightweight cars. A lot of the parts on these cars are consumables. Whereas some of the American cars, they have internal oil galleys to move oil around. These have a lot of rubber lines. They will mist. They will break down over time. They will need to be replaced. So nice part about these Porsches is that everything on them are designed to be rebuilt and 
they can be rebuilt over and over and over, maybe except for the case. Eventually, the cases will be an issue for these cars because you have to basically, if they don't align, you have to realign more them. And that doesn't really, uh, that can't happen indefinitely. There's a limit to how many times you can line board these cases. So I know I see that Porsche is making magnesium cases for the earlier models. And then there's a 964 style aluminum billet case being made by Noonan Racing. But the stock cases, it may take a hundred years or something, but if you're going to drive these cars, some parts will be an issue. They're not Chevy 350s where you could get them anywhere. So that is one disadvantage of this, but not really a uh, concern right now, but it is going to be problematic. But maybe we'll have bigger problems to worry about then. And I just rebuilt this engine, so I'm not going to be around when that would be a problem for the next person who owns this car. But I drive it. I don't hold back. These cars are meant to be driven. I almost prefer this one now. I clock it about 127,000 miles, but I rebuild everything on it. So I consider it almost a new car. So I almost prefer that. I don't know if I would really want an investment grade one of these. I, I don't want to worry where I park it. I could take this anywhere. It's not perfect on the outside. But not bad. Very presentable. People seem to like it at Cars and Coffee. Got a little brother up there. So yes, the experience of driving this car, just in general, when you first get in them, you do notice the engine is in the back. It feels weird because of that. Hey pal. Uh, the paddles are on the ground, off the floorboards. They were in a configuration of a, uh, kind of like a go-kart. Your loop here. After a while, you get used to the pedals, and then you say, Wow, why can't all of the pedals be that way? Because they're on the floor, you could work on them. You could remove the whole pedal box on this car, rebuild the bushings on it, and put it back in. There's no cables or anything, it's all rods, so it's like an aircraft. Other little items of note with the G50s people seem to really like these G50 gearboxes, transaxles. In these uh, shift, shifter area, there's bushings, they deteriorate. So a good 915 transmission will be better than a bad G50. This car was like, well, let's just say this car had deferred maintenance. Turn, I'll turn here. So when I test drove it, I'm like, man, this thing is like stirring porridge with a spoon. It had no, you know, it really had no... Uh, center to it of course i had basically had to rebuild everything on this car so i'm i would go through a car anyway so i prefer them like this i knew the owner of this car and he got sick it was he had a stroke and it was sitting since the early 2000s so i kind of had a partial maintenance history on it I knew I was getting into I bought it right priced right I did put a lot of money into it in my time since I did everything myself but hey I got a good driving grade car here I could take it anywhere I have driven it from South Florida 
to uh, North Carolina. I took it to the mountains and back, no issues. I've got about 4,000 miles on it since the rebuild. Break in went well, no issues since I rebuilt it. I've had very little problems. I did rebuild my sunroof. And then when I finished the car, it, you know, one of the little arms broke again. No big deal. That was like a $50 part. Probably the biggest bummer was my uh, air conditioner dryer broke. It blew up and it put all those little pellets into my AC system. This is after I did the rebuild. AC was actually on this car ice cold. And I blew up my, uh, I think it got into the evaporator. So I'm going to go with the classic retrofit system even if they may not work great for Florida. I'll still do a one condenser system just to keep it simple at some point. I'm in no rush to do it even, even though I am in Florida. It's a white car I could do it with some heat. Ventilation is good. But what I don't like about the ACs on these cars is the rear uh, condenser, there's two condensers in these cars. The rear AC condenser is right over the vent in the back that draws in air. And it really gets the engine temp high on these cars in Florida. So I don't want to dump hot air into the engine compartment of my build. So 12 volt AC it is. So yeah, you could drive this car around town, you could be a bit of a hooligan with it. Just don't, uh, don't try and shift it too fast. In your RPMs, I would say stock, you know, don't go much over six. If you do, this has valve springs in it, titanium valve retainers. And like I said, it has the better bolts on the rods. It's, able to withstand the RPM so but I just want to show you what what the driving is like when you give them the give it the beans all right well I guess I'll end the video here if you want to see any more of these driving videos maybe well, I don't have curvy roads here I'm sorry I'm in Florida but I could get out in the countryside where we have something better but just want to take you on a little loop and show you what this is all about later